The upsurge in uh, activity and hope and mobilizing that we've seen at the Ontario Federation uh, over the last six years uh, has been incredibly important. Uh, it's been really exciting to see some of the great fightbacks that Ontario unions have taken on uh, in the last few years. Uh, everything from challenging uh, precarious work, uh, challenging the global corporations uh, like US Steel and Caterpillar that are running roughshod over our economy, uh, giving workers hope that by joining together, uh, we don't have to accept this grim reality of precarious work as inevitable. Uh, we can articulate and fight for and win a better way of organizing our workplaces. Well, this place is historic because it was on this very place that the OFL mobilized 30,000 people against the Liberal government when it passed legislation to take away free collective bargaining, the largest demonstration of workers since the days of Mike Harris, and it was an incredible mobilization. And in fact, that's been the hallmark of the Federation of Labour over the last number of years. What an amazing turnout here today! 30,000 of the Labour movement! 30,000 of our friends! The 90 community organisations! Why can't we have a different way of looking at the economy? How about investing in the public sector? What's wrong with some, some infusion of dollars to create jobs? Making certain that we've got infrastructure program, green energy jobs that can't be exported to China. Mobilizations to defend workers' rights, whether that be here in the streets of Toronto, aimed directly at the provincial government, whether that be in southwestern Ontario, aimed at for-profit corporations, multinational corporations taking on workers' rights, whether that be in a small northern municipality where only 16 people are on strike. The OFL has brought workers together, mobilized people, built energy in our movement to defend workers' rights and defend the things that we all need in our communities. Well, Sid is one of those guys uh, that I know that wear it on his sleeve. Uh, there's no misunderstanding when he shows up which side of the, the fence he's on. He's with workers and he's with their struggle regardless of how difficult and challenging it might be. And I think it's a credit to his commitment and his, his, his principle that he will fight and he would engage and more importantly he will challenge. Sid has been a champion for working people, but he's also been a champion for this movement. I think his voice has been rich for our movement, have strengthened our movement and more importantly have made our movement better. His heart and soul was about building, of course, uh, workers uh, a strength and strengthening their movement to ensure that the employers and government that want to push us back will not succeed at the end of the day. Jack Layton talked about uh, we cannot just be opposition, we also have to engage in proposition. And in some respects, this is what we're doing. We're actually saying to people, um, out of this Ontario we want, we need to be able to articulate a vision. So it's about engaging the community. It's about diversity, making sure that the union movement is representative of the people that we represent out there from a leadership level. It's about saying to government, um, look, at, we are going to engage you at all levels. Um, we have an agenda. We're not going to be shy about talking about the right to strike. We're not going to be shy about saying we want card-based uh, card certification. We're not going to be shy about saying and championing that we want better pension plans. In other words, we want a better standard of living. We want to be able to share. When the province is doing well, when the country is doing well, workers need to be able to share. In the last few years, the OFL and SID in particular have been everywhere, like any struggle, even on uh, the Palestinian rights struggle, which is a lot of people don't want to take the risk of stepping out in support of Palestine. But Sid always did, because as an Irish person, he had that real strong sense of the importance of defending self-determination for a nation, uh, which Palestine is. Sid and, and, and the OFL have been present in almost every struggle. Any time I'm in the streets, he's in the streets. You know, whether it's anti-poverty, whether it's women's rights, whether it's indigenous rights, or uh, civil rights, like against the police. Sid's always there, and he makes sure the resources of the OFL are there, which has just been incredible. It's tremendously important that we recognize that in spite of you know, some victories that we've won, in spite of defeating Hudak, the corporate onslaught continues. You know, we're not out of the woods by any shape or form. We're not in a period of history where having the best argument and pleading and explaining wins. This is a power struggle that we're in and we have to organize ourselves in new and better ways. And I, I think the, the workers' rights campaign of the OFL was a significant step forward in terms of showing what it is we can really do. The one thing we have learned in the last six years, when the labor movement engages its membership, the grassroots, we can do amazing things. We have proven to the membership and to government that when the labor movement unites, we can win.